Hello and welcome to the finals of Grand Prix Chiba. We are doing three-headed giant coverage here with me, Nate Price, Matej Zadokai, and between the two of us, the smarter head of all three of us, <laughs> Dr. K. <laughs> Frank Karsten. Uh, we are watching Yuki Matsumoto on the left with his blue-white artifacts deck against Junya Iyanaga's incredibly powerful black-green sacrifice deck on the right-hand side. We've seen Iyanaga play a couple of times. Uh, how has Matsumoto gone so far? Uh, I mean, he only picked up one loss throughout the whole weekend. He went into the uh, top eight of, as a first seed, mm -hmm. so only one loss so far. And he can finish off this mm, GP in style if he can get his uh, blue-white artifacts deck rolling. All right, well, Iyanaga's off to a great start. A turn one, Turkatung Thalad. A turn two, Nest Invader, which we've already mentioned is one of the breakout green cards of uh, this format. Uh, Matsumoto's on the board a little bit slower with a Court Homunculus, the lonely one one. No artifacts to support it. Yeah, uh, Matsumoto also doesn't have much uh, in hand apart from uh, something like an Apostle's Blessing as well as uh, some reactive cards like uh, like Stoic Rebuttal, but nothing to uh, turn on the plus one plus one boost on uh, Quartermonk. There's also a Vapor Snack. Now he does draw a Gus Skimmer. That can uh, come down and pump the Quartermonculus, but if he plays it, he doesn't have mana anymore for the Stoic Rebuttal, so Inaga can resolve whatever he wants to. Yeah, it, uh, it was also interesting for me that uh, Ian Ayo did not attack with his Nest Invader into that Court of Ankylos in the previous turn, just with the Tukas and Tongue Tal, and didn't want to expose it to any shenanigans. Uh, but now they trade. All right. That was in the uh, graveyard right now. Uh, that drops Matsumoto down to just a lone Gust Skimmer in play. Uh, he does have blue mana in his deck and available to give it flying to get up over the ground creatures on Ianaga's side. Uh, Gus Skimmer is one of those great artifacts in any of the uh, Metalcraft based decks. Uh, great two power, two drop, has potential for evasion. Uh, it's one toughness, uh, leads it to be just a little bit vulnerable, especially against this Black Green Sacrifice deck, which we know has multiple copies of Plague Gusaka in it. Yeah, this is just so. uh, the 1-1 the one, one, uh, team deck from uh, Ienaga. <laughs> Tukatung Talit, it's a 1-1 one, one that leaves behind the 1-1. One, one. I'm surprised that it doesn't uh, attack into uh, the Gus Skimmer. Yeah, and, well, LG Garial currently is just a 1 1. But as we have seen in uh, Junya Ienaga's uh, semifinals, it can grow into easily a 15 15. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they had to uh, look elsewhere for additional counters because it was just getting out of hand. Yeah, it, it, he could have gone easily gotten to round 30, I think, with all the <laughs> Plague Rosalka shenanigans yeah. with Necrogenesis. I mean, he was just playing it slow, I think. And uh, after playing uh, Copper Carapace and giving the Gus Kimmer flying, uh, Matsumoto swings in for two. I really like uh, Junya Zianaga's willingness to trade off with the early artifacts just to uh, stave off Metalcraft for as long as possible, as he gets the option to do so. I mean, he would probably love a play Grusalka right now, wouldn't he? All right, so uh. see a scuttling death now come down for Ianaga. It's going to be a creature that he can use it to uh, sacrifice and kill that Gus Skimmer should Matsumoto decide to be foolish enough at this point to attempt to equip it. The uh, best part about that is it starts to put the counters on the TikTok croc. Tick that yep. crack. <laughs> He's a clock. And I love that crack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Gariel gets in for one. That might be the l like l only time I've ever seen the Algae Gariel attack and only have it be for one damage. <laughs> we might be seeing a very interesting play where Matsumoto does equip uh, his equipment to the Gus Gamer. Ianaga then responding with the scuttling deck, thinking, okay, I'm getting a super uh, good trade here. Mm -hmm. And then Matsumoto giving his uh, creature protection from black with that Apostle's Blessing in his hand, thereby uh, preventing the minus one, minus one from killing the Gus Gamer and still having uh, a nice big Gus Gamer that can uh, attack. Yeah, uh, but uh, won't we have mana? Uh, he probably won't have mana to give it flying though if he goes along that route. And I think Junya and I would be just gladly uh, blocking with his Tukathung Tally to grow his LG Garial and swing back for a lot of damage. So uh, that's why I think he just goes with the Spectral Procession here. All right, Spectral Procession uh, creates three one one flying spirit tokens. Uh, great to have an offense to go over Ianaga's uh, <laughs> ground creatures, but again, one one creatures against the. Uh, Plague Drusalka, we know we're hiding in Junior Iganaga's deck, plus three separate 1-1 one -one creatures means that those are potential future food for our <laughs> croc friend. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Uh, well, but now it's all, uh, the LG is guaranteed to be at least a 4-4. Four -four. It's Scuttling Death killing any 1-1 one -one or 2-1, and Eldrazi spawn sacrificing it will. So it's already looking like this is going to be another one of those LG Garyhole games. Yeah, and even if Matsumoto draws a removal spell like uh, Arrest or um, Narcolepsy, yeah, you, you can target it. LG Garyl has Shroud, 
Or, for example, the Vapor Snag in Matsumoto's hand. Mm -hmm. Nope, you cannot bounce that uh, LG Garial. It is here to stay. And what do we have here? Calling days. Another <laughs> option to start sacrificing creatures. We know that Circuit Tongue Thalad is probably not long for this world. He's going to go study up on the altar there. Yeah. All right, so we do, in fact, uh, see a sacrifice of the oh, Eldrazi drone to make a Dread drone, generating <laughs> more Eldrazi drones. More food for the crocodile. Oh, my goodness. He's going to be such a happy guy. Tick-tock, tick-tock it is. <laughs> <laughs> he can uh, happily swing here. Now uh, it guarantees uh, the Eldra Gurriel to be even bigger. Scuttling death, uh, killing a 1-1. One -one. That means that it's a 4-4. Four -four. Two Eldrazi spawn means it's a 6-6. Six -six. Culling days means it's a 7-7. Seven -seven. So it's attacking at least as a 7-7. Seven -seven. And um, we had no of obviously we see no blocks from, uh, from Matsumoto there. And Culling days... Uh, eats the Tukathon Talid, grows the LG Garial, and gives him a sap sapperling token. And we see a couple of other cards there in Ionaga's hand, shuffle around a Wolfbriar Elemental and a Kavu Primark. Because, you know, if Ionaga needs anything, it's additional creatures to potentially <laughs> yeah. throw away at this point. Why not? Yeah. I think the only uh, way that Matsumoto has to win this game is to enter a damage race in the air with his flyers or with the the golem in his hand that can uh, become indestructible if he uh, plays more and more artifacts while somehow jump blocking the crocodile at some point in this uh, damage race but it's far from easy to uh, to enter there because Matsumoto is easily behind in that uh, damage race. And he does have a representation right now of uh, a potential six point attack while leaving a blocker back, which might give him, I mean, that's effectively a three turn clock. And if he can follow that up with additional creatures to chump block that Algae Garial, he might actually be able to find himself a window to swing in the air. But it is going to be really tough because he's always going to have to worry about that continually growing Algae Garial. All right, so here's the move Scuttling Death goes to the graveyard, targeting the Gust Skimmer in response to the equip. Here's the play Frank pointed out earlier a possible uh, blessing, turning it to. Uh, Give it get protection from black, uh, making sure that the sacrifice goes away. And it, then it can gain flyer and turn around. There is that six-point attack. It's uh, it's a start. What actually happens to the Sepherling token from uh, Takatung Talit? Did Ianaga just uh, forget to uh, put it uh, in it, play? It, it was in play for for a short while, but now it seems to be gone again. Interesting. It may have just uh, missed uh, the trigger. May have, yeah. I uh, don't see a Vapor Snag uh, in the graveyard. There it is still in the hand. So, yeah, it looks like it's entirely possible. You mentioned he was very tired at the end of the day. Uh, yeah. mm. Very likely he and uh, Matsumoto neglected. I mean, he had, he had uh, no buys. He has been. Th this is his uh, 18th round of uh, magic throughout this uh, weekend. Let me tell you, it's pretty exhausting. I don't know, man. I mean, this is our 18th round, too. Wow. We're still, <laughs> you know, ridiculously tired. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> All right. Well if Ianaga has a removal spell here for the spirit token, he actually has uh, lethal, I believe. Although, no, he might still be uh, one one damage uh, <laughs> off, which is uh, careful, careful. Clo close enough. You can see he is really tired. So yeah, uh, yeah, grows the algae gear by a little bit. Uh, also now. Uh, can do a follow-up play. Here's the Wolfbriar Elemental we talked about. It doesn't do anything about the Flyers. However, it can it can come in as a 4-4 and create two, uh, two, two the Wolves and really put on the screw of uh, Yuki Matsumoto, who will have to start ke keeping creatures back. Yeah, mm. He could even pump it up even further if he wants to sacriface his uh, Eldrazi spawn to make an extra... Oh, wait, nope. He's dou he has double black already. I'm sorry. Uh, exactly, I, I missed yeah. that there was a... Unless he wants to keep up the mana for, for something else. Yep. All right. Oh, okay, already sacrificing it for the cards. I can I can see that. I mean, he's getting a good advantage out of that, and probably really wants to draw a plague Rusalka. Uh, I think he got a grim affliction out of that. Uh, okay. if I saw correctly. And that is uh, not only a removal spell, but it also allows him to proliferate, adding an additional counter to the Garial, and that might actually be lethal. Currently, oh. he has nine power. He can sacrifice the Eldrazi spawn. That's ten. Kill the one one token and put a counter on the LG Garial because a creature dies. So that's eleven. Plus the proliferate, that's 12. Now let's see if Can that's figure it out? what he drew. No. Okay, so that might, it's entirely possible that's not what he drew. I think you might have come to proliferate twice. I'm not exactly sure. There's, oh, okay, oh, that kills the 6-6, six, six, proliferate, 7. No, he was. I think he was one short. No, no, he wasn't actually. He also has the last point. You were right. He, yeah. 
Junyan Yanega really showing off, the, off how tired he is. No, it's also entirely likely that that's not a Grim Affliction that came off the top of his deck. Okay, so that's, that's yeah. even <laughs> good to hear. A very, a very likely alternative. <laughs> It's a little difficult to catch the cards that they come off the top of the deck at this angle, and uh, a couple of the cards have relatively similar art. Yep. So it probably wasn't. I'm sure Junior would have uh, would have thought uh, would have seen that and seen that. Ugh. All right. Here, here's the Wolf Bright Elemental for two. So now, now he's really on putting the screw. I mean, added eight power to the board uh, against a uh, life total of seven. Yeah. So Matsumoto has to leave behind uh, two jump blockers to even survive the next uh, combat. And well, I I guess one jump blocker plus vapor snag would also uh, work. Mm, yeah. Currently, Matsumoto can attack with his gust skimmer and the one one spirit for five damage. Vapor snag, that's another one. Then attack for five on the next turn. <laughs> one damage off. Again. Yes. Just has been usual for this GP <laughs> in general. Yeah, unless Matsumoto draws. Possibly uh, another equipment on the next turn. Mm -hmm. This uh, may be a game where uh, one player is uh, going to lose on just uh, well, with the opponent at one life. All right, Yanaga draws his card for the turn. <laughs> this fiddles with it some because you know you got to get it nice and warm before yeah. it hits the table. So this is a very interesting play. I mean, uh, uh, Yuki Masumoto now also has a Stoic Rebuttal in his hand. He can use to ca to counter a spell. Yeah, but he, he has to keep the mana open for, for Vapor Snack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Wolfbriar Elemental. But I really think it is a Grim Affliction in Junya uh, Naga's hand. Oh. He might have had it the turn before. I believe he did. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's just trying to play around something here. His well, opponent was tapped out last turn. Matsumoto he was, yeah. Matsumoto still has Glass Dusk Hulk uh, in his hand, which he can cycle to uh, sure. draw an additional card. Maybe draw something like, uh, well, I don't know, raise the alarm if it is in his uh, deck, which is kind of doubtful for an, a synergy-based artifact deck. But, mm -hmm. you know, this <laughs> we might just see some, uh, some further craziness uh, in this game. Yeah. And Yonaga planning his turn out right now. Uh, he currently has a 7-7 seven, seven Algae Garial, uh, moves to attack. 7-7, seven, 4-4, seven, four, four, and two 2-2s two, two enter the red zone. Oh, okay. He has there it comes. Grim Affliction before blockers. This is going to result in a cycled <laughs> Glass Dusk Hulk. Into no a the alarm. blinding Soul Eater That's and do a it. collection yeah. of cards. I All mean, right. Junior Inagi took the game, took him a while. He might have had the Grim Affliction the previous turn. However, I quite like how Yuki Matsumoto did not reveal either Vapor Snag or, or Stoic Rebel. And yeah. It might actually help him in the following games. Definitely. Uh, see, uh, from what we've seen of these decks so far, uh, admittedly, we didn't see a tremendously large amount from Matsumoto. We've seen Ianaga's deck run mm. uh, pretty much to perfection every single time that we've seen him in the feature match area. <laughs> um, as he's thumbing through his deck right there, you can get a very quick look at what Matsumoto is packing up. Who do you think holds the advantage in this matchup right now? Obviously, Ianaga's up a game, but mm. as far as the matchup of the archetypes go. Yeah. Well, I, w I would go for the the black green uh, sacrifice deck, Boring. mainly. Uh, well, it's it's mainly because uh, Matsumoto it w is not the only affinity drafter at the table. There were two other people uh, picking up the the rusted relics and the the somber Hoover guards and all of the the payoff cards. Okay. And affinity is one of the mechanics that can be super powerful, potentially even the the best archetype uh, in this entire format but only if you can uh, achieve the critical uh, mass. And with so many p people at the draft table picking up those artifacts, I'm not sure that uh, Matsumoto has enough of them to uh, reliably turn on all of his uh, artifact cards. All right, uh, Matei, how about oh, you? Yeah. Well, I still really like Junya Ian and I deck. I think he's going to win it. However, if out of the decks in top eight, there was a deck to beat Junya Inaga, I think Yuki Matsumoto has the tools okay. because He's the only uh, player with a critical amount of flyers, which do seem to be a bit of a weakness for Junya Yanaga. He doesn't have that much removal. Okay. He only has one uh, Bone Splinters uh, from like hard removal spells. And, uh, you know, Glastos Hulk is also basically a flyer. It's unblockable if you can manage to trigger it somehow. Sure. He also uh, even didn't manage to or deploy a Cumulox, which outside of Bone Splinters, I'm not sure how uh, Junya Yanaga wants to deal with. And uh, just in general, if he can get a quick start, 
that can be really good. However, Junior Inaga does have the plague, plague Rusalkas, mm -hmm. so th th that can be a problem in uh, preventing uh, Yuki Matsumoto from, from dealing the early damage. And uh, by the time he got gets the Cumulox into play, it might be too late. All right, well, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of interesting interactions as we continue this match. Hopefully, at least there's a potential for it. Uh, Matsumoto has the tools available to uh, get in and potentially steal uh, the next couple of games from Ianaga, but Ianaga also has the tools required to prevent that from happening should he draw them. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be a really big question of who gets what parts of their deck in this match. Yeah, we're certainly going to see uh, a very interesting game. The first one was uh, close and involved uh, a damage race that uh, put people down to uh, one life, uh, potentially. Mm -hmm. We saw, indeed, the, the synergy of uh, LG Garyol coming down and uh, beating uh, Matsumoto before he had a chance to deploy his uh, unblockable uh, creatures. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll probably see uh, kind of the same... Uh, this game. Matsumoto's deck is maybe not so much uh, blue-white artifacts, but as you mentioned, Mate, more uh, blue-white flyers, yeah. and that is exactly what he might uh, might need. Right. Uh, Cordwell is starting off, and I think he's a Copper Carapace in his hand, so that's a great way uh, to deal damage in the early game. Alright, uh, this is the turn right here. Is he not going to have a... Uh, Rusalka? Rusalka. Or no. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll find out. Uh, Yanaga picks it up, reads it, I'd imagine probably to take a look at what the equip cost was on it. Uh, all right, it's a Nest Invader, so it looks like we're going to be staring down at a 3-3 double-striking creature on turn two, or turn three. Uh, Ianaga does have a Nest Invader creating an Eldrazi spawn to give him, you know, a little bit of breathing room here, but that six power worth of attack uh, coming out of that core duelist is going to make short work of Ianaga if he doesn't find a way to get rid of that creature, and we know that he doesn't have uh, too many hard removal spells. That Bone Splitters that we saw is someone certainly going to be able to do some work here, but... Uh, his deck is going to be forced to find an answer to that uh, core duelist if he's going to have an opportunity to win this game in the same fashion as he did in the previous. Sure, but uh, Ianaga may also uh, go into damage raise mode where he well he starts to attack with uh, Nest Invader and then eventually deploys some more creatures uh, to the board, starts to get in with those, and then leave behind some, some Eldrazi spawn tokens to uh, block the core duelist as Ianaga might be getting behind uh, in the damage race. All right. Well, he also had cards like uh, Takatong Talid, which uh, could provide him with uh, two chum blockers. So if Ianaka doesn't have a removal spell for the double striker, he just has to uh, go for the damage race plan. Basically play the uh, the creature-based version of Turbo Fog? <laughs> uh, yeah, basically. Uh, like the, the There we have it, yeah. the, the chum block plan. Takatong Talid in the house to take one uh, for the team. Yeah, it's interesting that Matsumoto uh, has a guile in hand that costs triple blue, and only now he drew his first blue source, so <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, that's a while off for, uh, for now. All At right. least he can play a Gust Skimmer. All right, Gust Skimmer with that island that he does have access to allows him to possibly lift it up and send it in. Uh, let's hold on to a Glass Dust Colk and a fifth land, though, so we'll see what uh, he decides to do with his next turn. Ianaga is... Started to get his creatures out there. Um, uh, he's got a Sapperling in play from the dead Turkatung Thalad, as well as a Nest Invader. Uh, three lands in play and a handful of cards. Thinks for not terribly long amount of time, before playing a land for the turn, decides to attack in for that three points of damage, knocking Matsumoto down to 15. After combat, makes the move to play a third Swamp, giving him four mana. <laughs> Nest Invader, <laughs> of yeah. course. Finding yet more fogs. <laughs> yeah, I might have actually liked a block uh, on the Nest Invader there because Matsumoto is probably going to use his mana on the next turn to deploy Glass Dusk uh, Hulk. Mm, As I we see. mentioned, the way that uh, Matsumoto might lose this game if, if he gets uh, behind in the damage race. And that is easy to do if uh, Ienaga is allowed to connect with his uh, creatures. I think we're going to see Glastas Hulk. There it is. Right. Uh, Matsumoto also has a uh, Sunspear uh, Shikari that he just drew. Uh, so maybe next turn after uh, attacking, he can equip the Copper Carapace to the Shikari and the following turn start attacking and gaining some life back so that he won't get raised. But that's uh, also pretty hard against Eldrazi spawn tokens who can sacrifice themselves to prevent lifelink. It's a couple turns off though. All right, guys. I've had a lot of fun doing this so far this weekend. Right now, what we've seen. Who do you think has the advantage at this point in the game? Frank? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to go with Matsumoto uh, at this point. Just because Ianaga hasn't uh, been deploying big attackers uh, so far, only two Nest Invaders. 
and that last disc Hulk can uh, can actually block both of them. Although <laughs> maybe Ianaga has a trick uh, up his sleeve here. I think I saw a Grim Affliction in his hand, so it looks like we're going to see that trick. All right. So I'm going with Junior Ianaga then <laughs> after seeing this Grim Affliction. <laughs> I think that's a good call right there. Way to use all the information at hand, Mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was slow rolling my answer a little it's bit. The mark of a true good magic player, use the maximum advantage. Shame on you, Frank. Hall of Fame. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's just like with instance. You have to wait until the last possible moment. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, so the attack the got rid of another creature, but now uh, Matsumoto played the blinding soul leader and a sun spirit card. I might actually change my mind nope, again. Nope. 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 Decision's been made. It's been oh, okay. I wrote it's it on my it's paper. It's locked in. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Matsumoto's doing well. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's my job now to go with the cheesy and always correct answer that the people watching this game at home are going to be the clear winners once everything's all said and done. Of course. It's okay, Mate. Get the uh, the vomit bag away. It's, <laughs> 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 it's not that saccharine sweet. Oh, you're welcome. All uh, right. <laughs> well, Matsumoto does have a nice aggressive board, and uh, that Blinding Soul Eater is definitely going to be on getting rid of blockers duty as opposed to slowing any down any attacks from Ianaga. Uh, scuttling death, a 4-2, that minus one, minus one ability has the ability to take out a, uh, Gus Gamer, but it also prevents that Soul Eater from blocking this turn, so, looks like, uh, Ianaga's attempting, to, yep, gonna send in both of his nest invaders, uh, into the 2-1, two, 2-2, one, two, two, and 1-3 of, uh, Yuki Matamoto. I don't know. Trading uh, Blinding Soul Eater for a Scuttling Death is still uh, is still fine, especially when Ianaga currently does not have any spirits in his graveyard to uh, mm. deter with Soul Shift. Okay. I I wouldn't be opposed to just blocking there if I were uh, Matsumoto. Of course, having uh, that Tapper around might prove to be useful uh, later on. But you know, if you don't block here, you're just gonna have to contend with the Scuttling Death on the on the subsequent turns, and by blocking you prevent some damage. In, in addition to that, uh, if you trade Blinding Soul Eater for Scuttling Deaths, that's, uh, that's fine. All right, it looks like he opts to block both creatures. Mm -hmm. Trades off his Gust Skimmer with uh, one of the Nest Invaders. Uh, I think that was primarily because he knew that it might not be long for the world with the Scuttling Death in play, uh, or is it just... I mean, throwing away an invasive creature, and yeah. we've already talked about how important he is bottle creatures are. Blue mana. Yeah, I think he just wants to get rid of the scuttling death, just so that maybe uh, uh, he can enable some of the sh copper carapace on the some spirit shikari shenanigans. Okay. I will also attack with the uh, with the two two here. Mm. I don't think he wants to trade. Oh, oh wow, hello! Why hello there, Mirror and Crusader protection from green and from black. So protection from all all, all the blockers <laughs> except the Eldrazi spawn. So, <laughs> I mean, it looks kind of green to be fair. Wow. Uh, so Mirren Crusader, very powerful on its own, even more so when 90% of the creatures in your opponent's deck aren't capable of blocking it. Uh, <laughs> yep. uh, yeah, it, it can uh, take out Ianaga in two attacks ah. if uh, Copper Carapace will be uh, equipped to it. All right. So, But there's some blockers. Yeah, we, we've seen some Just creatures one. on the side of the table of uh, Ianaga right now. He's got a 5-5 five, five Sign of the Wild, although that's almost certainly going to be shrunk here over the next couple of turns. And a Plague Drusalka, which... Uh, has the ability to get rid of that core duelist should that uh, copper carapace come off of it. Uh, what would you do right now if you're planning this attack, seeing what Ianaga's got on play? Uh, I, I think uh, Matsumoto drew a, a Vapor Snag, so he's going to re-equip the copper carapace. A vapor Snag, the Eldrazi spawn, I think. Yes, and, and then swing then for eight. Okay. Yes, and then swing for eight on the next turn, and he should be able to win uh, that way. Or, or not. I think he drew Vapor Snack uh, as well. He did. So here uh, goes the I attack. I find it a bit uh, questionable to allow Ianaga to uh, to block the Mirren Crusader uh, at this point, because Matsumoto is in no danger of dying to Ianaga's next attack. Mm -hmm. But if he cannot uh, close out the game in two attacks, Matsumoto might die to uh, two combat uh, phases from yeah, Ianaga. Exactly. Uh, that's because, especially oh, because of uh, four four sign of of the wild, which might get even bigger. Or you know, just giving Junya and I even more time to find an answer. Uh, even like a removal spell would mean that uh, Ianaga was winning the damage race. All right. Well, 
Looks like Yanaga is planning to send a 2-2 and a 4-4 Sign of the Wild in. Uh, rethinking that now. Uh, six men available to him, a single card in his hand. Sorry, seven men available to him, a single card in his hand. Matsumoto has uh, just a 2-2 back for defense. So here comes that original attack. The Sun Spear uh, lines up against the Nest Invader. Looks like we're going to have Iyanaga trade off the 1-1 one -one Sapper Lane to shrink the uh, Sun Spear enough that the Nest Invader will now win combat. This does shrink the uh, Sign of the Wild down to a 3-3, three -three, so as it stands, Matsumoto will be losing his Sun Spear and dropping down to 10. Yes, I mean, the Vapor Snag is still a, a very very good trump card, because now he basically um, regained all the tempo with the way the turn um, the turn was played out, mm -hmm. bouncing the Sign of the Wild, taking no damage, and while being able to present that two-turn clock again, well, in no danger of dying uh, to a two-turn clock of his opponent. All right, so Vapor Snag... Unless something very strange happens right here, we'll return the Sign of the Wild back to stand. Although, he looks like Iyanaga might be considering sacrificing it to... Okay. Yeah, mm. that makes a little more sense. Goes ahead and puts it back into his hand, drops down to 12. Uh, Matsumoto takes no damage, putting his Sun Spear in the graveyard. Oh, no cards for Junya Iyanaga. Mm. Deploys this final land just yeah. to maximize his mana for the following turns, maybe, yep. if he draws something more expensive. All right, Hellbent it is, and here comes the protection from green, protection from black, Mirror and Crusader against the green and black creatures of Ooh, Iyanaga. Wow, and a Tajinar of Swordsmith off the top for Yuki Matsumoto. And oh, but no equipment. <laughs> and now there better be Nest Invader, Kozilex Predator, or uh, an Eldrazi on top of the Iyanaga's deck. Otherwise, yeah, protection from my entire deck. Protect from black, protect from green. Inaga won't be able to block it unless he has some Eldrazi related card. Wolfrire oh. Elemental, that's a huge rare, but all green, it's not gonna cut it. Game three, all right. I told you Matsumoto could do it. Yeah, you clearly selected the appropriate person on this side of the game. I, I said it at the start <laughs> of the game, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I got a little carried away with the Grim Affliction. Well, blame me for that. I like removal. Uh, I don't blame you for anything. Uh, I'm actually, as far as I'm concerned, I'm happy we get to go to a, a third game. That that Mirren Crusader, big deal <laughs> in this matchup. Uh, yeah. As our, our as our chat pointed out, uh, three mana, uh, two to double strike protection from your deck. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although we have seen there are a large number of Eldrazi spawn creating cards in Ianaga's deck. That speed unfortunately, bump. just a speed bump. Just Nothing a, yeah, exactly. I was say, unfortunately, that's what they are. Is just a speed bump. They're each one of them represents a one turn prevention. Uh, although. His deck has shown that it's capable of turning on the gas very quickly, so uh, mm -hmm. he might be able to turn the corner and get in there fast enough. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see how this last game plays out. Yeah, and I, I could even see uh, that Mirror Crusader coming down, then Ianaga making a bunch of uh, tokens with the Nest Invaders, and Matsumoto just happily plopping uh, a kite sail on his uh, Mirror Crusader, mm -hmm. such that he can not only fly uh, over the, the green and black creatures that couldn't block anyway, but also over the Eldrazi spawn tokens. <laughs> that would be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> just you are not going to interact with this card at all. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if he has... Uh, if he actually has uh, Kite Sail, because did he played the Tajna or Swordsmith here he at does. the end? I just saw him pass through it in his deck. Okay. Yeah, yeah but cool. he only had one mana up when he, uh, when he played it. Oh, yeah, it. true, right. Yeah. I, I thought he was six. Yeah, you're right. Mm. All right. Look at those sideboard <laughs> options. He's got gotcha. a four, Flash uh, Freeze. Uh, repeal. There. Uh, gotcha <laughs> might actually be reasonable against Ianaga's deck, which uh, kind of needs Plagued Rizalka yeah. in order to uh, turn on all of its cards and have a way to interact with all of the flyers from uh, Matsumoto. Oh man, Matsumoto is going uh, on the to the skies plan. Uh, brings in a flash freeze, uh, looking to bring in a helium squirter to give a couple of creatures more, flyers. more flyers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then uh, brings in, was that, a, was that a repeal that we saw as the last card I think well? it was a repeal. I, I thought he had a, a steady progress ready there. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I think he definitely wants to board out the um, stoic rebuttal on the draw now. Yeah. Uh, we, s we saw how uh, low the curve of Junya Yanaga's deck is, mm -hmm. and I don't think... Uh, he, we saw game one, he was sitting on it almost the whole game, and yeah, there's a steady progress in the VG and Graftmate as well, so I'm really wondering what the Yuki Matsumoto is thinking here. Uh, it looks like he's already pulled the uh, Stoic Rebuttal out, it's now sitting in that sideboard potential set of cards. Uh, looking through, it's like a... I think he's thinking about possibly taking out the Gust Skimmer that we saw as vulnerable to a number of cards in uh, Ianaga's deck. And, uh, 
Yeah, it's not gonna trade favorably if Ianaga has again like a plagued Rizalka with some uh, some sacrifice fodder like uh, Takatang Talit. Mm -hmm. That Gust Skimmer is uh, not gonna do much for uh, for Matsumoto. But on the other hand, any flyer that he can get his uh, hands on, that is likely gonna be the the path to victory. Or I, sh I should rephrase, any unblockable uh, cards, also to include the, the Mirren uh, Crusader. Uh, unless I'm going crazy right now, I saw as Matsumoto was thumbing through his deck a pair of Stoic Rebuttals that are still in his deck, as well as a Mana Leak. Okay, so maybe you, he just wants to do a completely different plan. Counter Skies? <laughs> Count yeah. <laughs> yeah um, take, take to the air with some fires and counter all the, the big relevant spells. But I, I've seen he, this deck. <laughs> Ten years ago? Yeah, JLR, <laughs> top eight of the Pro Tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, I did mention a Rishad and Airship uh, throughout the yeah. weekend because I was talking about Dagger Claw Imp and I, how I have a strong affinity for that card. So, sure. Affinity is a different deck. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's okay. It's a common mistake. Yeah. I, I think it's Frank with the affinity for artifacts. Uh, agreed. <laughs> I have an affinity for affinity. <laughs> Every affinity deck in the top eight, Frank gets easier to uh, <laughs> get excited over the matchups. We yeah, see. but but Matsumoto's deck is not really that much of a blue-white artifacts deck. He he doesn't even have all that many artifacts uh, in his deck at all. Uh, almost no uh, metalcraft cards, just a few affinity cards. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as we ma mentioned, it's more a blue-white uh, skies deck than a blue-white uh, artifact deck. But still. A deck with, with a good uh, game plan. And I think the counter magic may also help him to deal with some of the high impact cards like Wolfbriar Elemental that uh, Ianaga had earlier. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see how it works out. Okay, Matsumoto gets on board with that Copper Carapace that was so important in that first game. Follows it up with a Gust Skimmer. Uh, something I'm certain he's probably going to want to be getting that Copper Carapace on to, you know, when he has the opportunity to. Uh, Ianaga starts off with the standard Nest Invader as well as his kill spell, uh, <laughs> Sign in Blood. Yeah, that was just ridiculous. In uh, the semifinals, <laughs> he was uh, fully in control of the game. He just drew uh, a bunch of uh, cards with uh, Culling Dias and mm. then played Plague Rusalka, sacrificed some cards, played some other cards, and then realized that, oh, wait, I have Sign in Blood. Opponent is a two. Oh, Sign in Blood, you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. He was just tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but a funny slow roll to watch, uh, nevertheless. So we yeah. see Matsumoto go ahead and trade that Gust Skimmer that we see is very fragile off with that 2 2. So, play that I'm certain he's more than happy to make. Follows that up with a Spectral Procession, filling his board up with three 1 1 flying tokens, uh, looking to get the aerial race on early. Yeah, and that is the reason why he traded off those creatures there, because he knew had a, he had a great follow up in uh, the Spectral Procession. But I, I didn't quite in like that attack as much, uh, uh, the trade as much. But here's a turn four precursor golem, and so if Yuki Matsumoto doesn't have a way to kill this, it's still going to be a lot of damage. Talk about filling uh, your board up. Uh, also, what vapor snag would be <laughs> sweet. Oh, he does have vapor snags, so, but that re returns to hand. Loses three. Matsumoto is racing here, guys. <laughs> oh man. Uh, and Precursor Golem also one of the better uh, answers to Mirren Crusader actually, although the game is not coming down to that, but uh, that is one of the possible ways for the black green deck to beat uh, yeah. that card. I found a way for Junya uh, Yanaga to race this, he drew a Vampire Outcast. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> still in it. Link, that is one of the better abilities when you are in a damage race. Yes. Yeah, with, with Ianaga already at 10 life, I think I uh, prefer the Bloodthirst creature over the Precursor Golem at this point. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's he's facing a two-turn clock, basically, right? Uh, yes, he is. It's so. uh, five power uh, in the air on uh, Matsumoto's uh, side. All right, here we go again. 4-4 uh, four, four Lifelinker hits play on Ianaga's side. It's going to change the clock a little bit. And does Matsumoto have an answer to that uh, Lifelink creature? If not, Matsumoto is likely going to fall behind uh, in the damage race. He, he drew gut shot. <laughs> well, that's uh, not what he needs in this particular situation. But he does have Blinding Soul Eater, which is not going to answer the Vampire Outcast immediately. But on the next couple of turns, he can tap down the Life Linker while still uh, continuing to swing in the air. All right, Blinding Soul Eater has just done a tremendous amount of work all weekend long. It's got to yeah. be one of the cards of the weekend. We, we mentioned that, uh, yeah, it, that card was doing work. Always annoying, and people underrated it, but you can play it in, uh, very well in any sort of white deck, mm -hmm. or even sp just play Splashing White. You can always deploy it as a 3 mana 1 3 and tap, tap down with uh, one incidental planes off of uh, Evolving Wilds or something like that. I think we even saw it earlier in the day in a Black Red Bloodthirst deck <laughs> where you were purely playing it for the uh, Phyrexian mana cost to push blockers sure. out of the way. 
And it's particularly good in this uh, format, although this is probably not gonna matter in this uh, game here. Mm -hmm. But it is a great card against equipments, because as opposed to just a, a spot removal spell, with Blinding Soul Eater you can always keep on tapping the creature that is currently carrying uh, the equipment. All right, looks like we go ahead and play a Nest Invader, sacrifice the Eldrazi spawn that comes into play to make that Precursor Golem again. Yanaga just fills his board up, uh, he says, you want to go ahead and tap down my creatures with uh, the Blinding Soul Eater? Uh, maybe I can race you if you've got no blockers back. He's got a... I mean, how does this race actually work <laughs> out yeah, it's, it's, right now? It's not enough. Mm. Currently, Matsumoto is uh, winning because he has a two-turn clock in the air. Uh, he can uh, tap down the Vampire Outcast on the next turn, and then Ianaga will only swing in for 12 damage. So Matsumoto would fall to two, and then kill Ianaga on the swing back. Wow. The shame he doesn't have that sign in blood. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, so it looks like, yeah, Matsumoto just said, uh, I'm just going to put my spirits in the air as a kite sail <laughs> to an already flying spirit. It's just like, yeah, cool, bro. I'll wrestle. <laughs> And swings in for three, four, five, six. See? You can see uh, Yanaga's hands are shaking a little bit there. He, unless he draws something. Oh, I, I don't know. A uh, Plague Rusalka would be a great out. No, I don't, I don't think that would. Unigenic growth? <laughs> yeah, he only has a bunch of swamps. I think the game it might be already over. I fear the same. Uh, unless so Matsumoto forgets to tap the Vampire Outcast. And even then it might not be enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is Yuki Matsumoto going to uh, become the champion of the biggest Grand Prix in Japan of all time? All right. There's the tap. Yanaga gathers his creatures. Yeah, it's only 12 power. <laughs> I'm certain that he knows that at this point. Takes a look at his hand. Turns this creature sideways. <laughs> How is confident is he? I'm taking it. Well, nothing I can do anyway, but... I got the win. That was a very conf confident uh, gesture from uh, Yuki Matsumoto. Two to three, another insanely close game. Yeah, no sign in blood. He already, he or Junya Yanaga already played that one. Mm -hmm. uh, he's surveying his options, looking for any outs that he can uh, somehow assemble or maybe bluff something that would prevent uh, Matsumoto from attacking. But I don't think there is anything that Yanaga can conceivably bluff here. Besides, I mean, at this point, I don't know if there's anything that Matsumoto would play around. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's not in a position to uh, do anything apart from, okay, here we go, put in all of my flyers into the red zone. Did I get there? All right. As they are tearing down the room around us, uh, we are watching the final turn of the finals here from Grand Prix Chibo. Yuki Matsumoto looks to have things well in hand. Juni Iyanaga tapped out all of his creatures. Nothing but lands in hand, lands in play. All we're waiting for is the hand to move across the table. And there it goes. Junya Iyanaga yeah, picks up his cards. Yuki Matsumoto has taken things down, winning 2-1 to become the champion of the largest Grand Prix in Japanese history, Grand Prix Chiba. Yeah, you mentioned uh, hands going across the table. Yuki Matsumoto. Handshakes are not common in uh, Japan. It's just uh, a cultural thing. They typically uh, mm -hmm. n uh, bow to each other and thank each other for the games. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it it is over. Yeah, I mean it was a great uh, great match. And as I mentioned before the final started, uh, if there was anyone to take down Yunya Yanaga in this top eight, it, w it was Yuki Matsumoto because his deck was set up with flyers, and that's exactly how he won his games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. There you go, Matei, the smartest of all three. You should have been in the middle. I should have <laughs> been. Yeah, I, it's right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's been a long weekend for uh, for all of us, for all of you at home as well. Um, yeah, we had Nate in the booth, Frank in the booth, me in the booth. Lots of people uh, around here helping us bring you fantastic features, fantastic uh, feature matches. Uh, but I want to especially thank you for staying with us throughout the weekend here in Chiba. There's more magic to come if you want to keep watching. There's a GPU track over on the other stream. Mm -hmm. GPU Las Vegas is on later today. Uh, I mean, this is just a fantastic celebration of magic. And thank you for being here with us for that. And now, here's Rich. Sig, thank you.
As we come to the end of Grand Prix Chiba, and in some senses, Chiba is being demolished around us, it's noticeable that magic is not about tables and chairs, is it? It's not, it's not about the infrastructure, it's not about the convention center, the city, it's not even about the country or the continent we're in, because the real truth about magic is that it exists right here in these interactions and these moments of smiles all around from people who have spent their weekend playing the magic that we all love. And so much of the time, we, particularly on coverage, are focused, of course, on who's doing best, who's got the best deck, who's 6-0, and who's 9-0, and who's missing out on top eight, and ultimately, who wins the top prize. But this weekend, well, it sounds trite, we're all winners, you know the phrase, but it's true, because magic isn't just about cards and play mats and decks and sleeves, and that very nice top deck there, it's very good, you should watch out. But it's about friendship, old friends, new friends, friends from the local game store, friends at the PPTQ, the RPTQ, friends you meet on the Pro Tour, friends you hang out with, friends you test with, friends you trade with because magic is about us as human beings. That's its great power. Magic really is more than a game. So as we hand off from here at Grand Prix Chiba to Europe in Utrecht, and then again to Las Vegas in North America, we want to thank you for being part of our Modern Masters weekend. More importantly, we want to thank you for letting us be a part of yours. Until we meet again somewhere in the multiverse, on behalf of everyone here at Grand Prix Chiba, I'm your host, Rich Hagen, saying sayonara.